What if you could sit down once a week with a colleague who's a flat out warrior? This colleague wasn't a stud in dental school. He struggled. He returned to practice in his hometown, an area once labeled by USA Today as the second worst place to live economically in the United States. And this very same colleague went on to establish an historically successful general practice known worldwide. What if he knew someone that wanted to take you by the hand and show you everything you need to know, from treatment planning to leadership, to maximizing your journey in dentistry or just life? You ready to be inspired? Welcome to the Lion Army. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Steve Rasner, your host, and you're tuned into the Lionhearted Dental Podcast. If by chance this is your first time, I've been doing these since 2018, and it's my way of, I don't know, giving back, sharing with you principles and protocols that have worked for me famously over the years, and allowed me to reach a very fulfilling level of dental practice. I'm a guy that comes off edgy sometimes, and that is what you're going to get tonight. Well, let me just get to it. Well, first, let me thank all of you who continue to write to me, particularly you young doctors who are either at D4 of your dental school career or young doctors that are just getting out. I, I can't tell you, I'm, listen to me, why am I doing this? When you do what I'm doing, like most podcasts that you probably listen to are much more organized than this one is. I tried to give you real world advice. And it's shocking to me how few people listen, because I know... My advice is spot on. And I also know, however, it requires a lot of energy and a lot of time. And some of it's not fun. And like tonight, as you're going to hear, a leadership principle. Well, what you're going to hear, those of you that have tuned in before, and I know you love this stuff, and I I already hear you laughing because you're going to, we're going to start the podcast with a rant. Every time I do a rant, I get bombarded with great emails. Now, I have thought about why is that the case? Is it like you watching a sitcom for years and years like Friends and you're waiting and hoping that for a certain couple, I can't think of their names, to fall in love and that's why you tune in because every once in a while they give you a flash of that. Or you're waiting for the bully. I hope I'm not a bully, although you might think differently in a couple minutes, for the bully to get his due. And that's why you tune in and watch a certain movie. And I do too, by the way. But I know you like them, and part of this podcast is going to start with that. But again, please feel free to reach out to me at Dr. Rasner at AOL.com, which, by the way, I am about to change. I'm not kidding. I'm giving it up, and I'm going over the Gmail, and I'll let all you know when I do that. I have a Gmail account. I just don't like – it's just different, and I got so used to my stupid – you know what? (laughs) Somebody told me last week, because I was having trouble, somebody hacked my AOL account. Did some nasty, tried to do some nasty things, try to get money, $70,000 out of me. It didn't work. And I told this person, I'm ready to, I'm done. I I just can't deal with it anymore. I said, "What, what is the story, by the way? Everybody laughs at me when I tell them I have an AOL account. He says, It doesn't even exist anymore, does it? I mean, they sold to somebody else. I don't remember what he told me. And those people just faded it out. I guess that's why it's funny. So let me get to this. Keep emailing me until I change it. I appreciate your feedback or anything else you want to talk about. 
And, you know, you can give me subjects that you like to discuss. So here it is, okay? Here is, first of all, the backstory of my office right now. I have 15 employees, I guess, in the violent office. Three of them are expecting a child. So it's going to be an absolute shit show for me. God bless them. All the happiness in the world. I mean that. Of course I'm happy for them. But I'm running a business and it's going to be impacted. And I'm just giving them my backstory right now. Because it hasn't even happened yet. Nobody has even left yet. But I'm going to lose three of them in August or September. Okay? And I certainly are going to welcome them back. So why is that hard on us? in case any staff members. And look, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's primarily a female uh, staff in dentistry, I think. And that's part of the equation. And, you know, we obviously, what has to happen is we have to manipulate and maneuver our staff and our teams so we can keep the door open when the staff member who was pregnant is ready to come back to work. At least that's what I've done for 40 years. Sometimes they're back in eight weeks. Sometimes they're back in a year. That is tough stuff, man. Especially today, in today's world, yikes. I haven't even, I don't even know what's going to happen. Because you know, and I know, that hiring and finding staff, quality staff members, has completely changed since COVID-19. And I'm not smart enough or don't have the time to find out why. Okay. So that's the backstory I'm giving you. So it's already difficult. Oh, okay. And then last Thursday, one of my staff members comes up to me. I'm not kidding this. This is true. So I already know for weeks, maybe months, that three are going to be leaving. And a, a key staff member comes up and says, no, she doesn't say anything. She comes in. My office, it's about 4.30 on a Thursday, and closes the door. Let me just tell you one thing. Pearl of wisdom, a Rasnerite, lionism, whatever you want to call it. When your staff member comes in or asks, can they speak for you to you for a moment? Or worse, come in and they don't even ask that. They just walk in and close the door behind them. A never good news. It is never an appreciation commentary on you as the boss. It is never, I think you're overpaying me. I want came in here, I want you to readjust whatever. It isn't, what can I do to make your life easier and this office run better? Actually, that may have happened a couple of times. I would love that. So would you. So that's the backstory. And somebody gave me their two weeks, that person gave me their two weeks notice. And it's heartbreaking because she started as a file clerk, worked her way up to top front desk person, and really, really, really good at what she does. I would tell you, I could send her to your office and you would find out in four hours, maybe I should do that. What? a front desk team member needs to be. It's unbelievable. Attention to detail. Recall on about everything you ask them to do. But she's leaving in two weeks, and it's medical leave, and there's nothing I can do. And I don't even know when she's coming back, if ever. It's not a pregnancy. Okay. So I start out my week on this Tuesday. We only have three days this week. With a person not calling out, but took a vacation day. So I need just one person, a sterilization assistant in my office. You would think, what's the big deal? I'll tell you what the big deal is. The big deal was the following. Now, I'm not faulting her. Apparently, I was not prepared in my mind. So when I got the request... Can I have off the, uh, Tuesday after Memorial Day weekend? I must have said, okay. 
because I knew she had a vacation day. By the way, all this, that all of these things get tied together of what's coming up and who's going to be off in the morning meeting. Okay, you if you're not instituting a morning meeting, you need or because you're scared or tired. There's no reason I can give you. I skipped it for years because I thought my team was doing it and I just ignored it. You know why I ignored it? Because the cash flow and the ebb and flow of the office was still really good for years. But what happened, as I explained to you in past podcasts, is it started to catch up with us and the lack of preparation of what was going to happen on a given day uh, snowballed from one day to the next to the next. And every day felt like a catastrophe or unfulfilling, whatever it was. And on so one person out, I guess the takeaway from this early part of this podcast is this. One person out entirely changes the dynamics of a lion-hearted office. And that's because everybody has a specific role to make those giant numbers happen that you hear me talk about from time to time on this podcast. So here's what I want you to follow this. So that one so the person was out. I actually have the scheduled day in front of me. And we start out the day at nine o'clock with a couple post ops. And my first real patient of the day was an implant, an easy one, a free handed implant at 10 o'clock in the morning. Well, here's the thing not on every patient. And by the way, this patient that I'm referring to right now was the beginning of a giant treatment plan. I'm talking $35,000 or more. And all I was doing on this, because she's getting a complete smile makeover, but just so you know what's involved in this, uh, she's missing premolar on the bilaterally, and she was going to come in, and, and I was going to get the implants in so they can be integrating, so to speak, before I do, use, do crown and bridge on the interiors. She's also going to get bilateral ramus grafts on the mandible so that I can place implants in posterior of her mandible as well. And I deliberately didn't start with that because this woman has fears, uh, obviously had not had good dental care for a long time. And I purposely, well, she went through scale and root planings first. I knew that would be a slam dunk because my team can deliver that to a fearful patient pretty reliably and smoothly. Uh, without, an, uh, without an untoward event. So I wanted on purpose, and she had an endo done. So there's two visits started on this giant case. Steve Rasner's time to deal with this patient put up a couple implants. Well, guess what? I was going to do it freehand. It's a premolar. It's not really a big problem. Somehow, number one, I dropped the ball and did not review my CBCT. So when you looked at this site, you saw a great vertical bone and you were very relieved. But that's not what a CBC tells you, as you know, which you must always have for an implant. I forgot, I, I dropped the ball. You know, we have protocols to back me up. Now I'm taking the blame for this, to be honest with you. Other protocols in the office are in place to stop that from happening. And I did not read the CBCT. And as a result, when I get in there, she had a huge buccal concavity. So, and another one of my assistants. So I work with one to two assistants while I'm doing a surgery. Often there are two in a room. That's not uncommon for people, to clinicians that do significant surgery. But I didn't have that on this day. I did not have it because that assistant was in sterilization because sterilization needed another vacation day right after a vacation weekend. You starting to get the picture? So my dental assistant has to retract lips, hand me graft material, hand me tack system to tack in Memlock, which I was building out the concavity, which was my fault. 
and my system failed for not having. This is the day after a three-day weekend. That's not how it should work. And it and I, I boarded. I didn't place an implant. I did not prepare for a graft, which I'm now was trying to do. The patient's jaw was bothering them. They were sedated. Everything just got harder. I'm just telling you. And it kind so so my next patient was an extraction in Crown and Bridge. I mean, it doesn't get much easier. 20 through 22, replacing 21. I don't know if it's related. All I'll tell you is I haven't had a patient like this in a long time who would just start, I don't know if she was screaming or just making a lot of noise. Not because of anything I was doing. Sometimes I would not even be in her mouth. I'd be getting some instrumentation I needed and she just started, it was, it was disturbing. So this day went through whatever it went through. I was highly unproductive. And when I came in the next day, which was Wednesday, which was the second day of the week, I told my staff the following. I said, listen, I have two new rules. I've been in practice for 42 years, and I've never said what I'm about to say to you. And I'm telling you guys this for a reason. This isn't just a random rant, but it, it is a rant. So this is the next day. And I was pretty unhappy with dentistry on the Tuesday after Memorial Day for the reasons I just told you. The whole day changed because I was missing an assistant who was in sterilization. So when I came in on Wednesday, I said, so here's the rule. So I first said, listen, and by the way, the sterilization assistant was present at the meeting, as is everyone. I said, before I say anything, this isn't your fault. I okayed this. Uh, you came to me months ago and said, can I have a day off? I said, yes. I'm not sure why I said yes. But here's the new rules. You can't take off the day after a vacation. Period. Now, I'm talking to you right now. And I know if your team's listening, they are probably going to riddle me with bad karma, bad juju right now. Who the heck does he think he is? Well, who the heck he thinks he is, is he's, try he's really looking out not just for himself. The whole office stressed out. The quality of dentistry went south. You can't do that in a fee-for-service practice. People are going out of network and paying for a different... I can't tell you how many times during a given week, including this one, that I have a patient out of nowhere just stop me and say, they may be walking from hygiene. They may be walking from a post-op surgical visit where my assistant took care of them or whatever, but it happens frequently. And they will say... I don't know how you do it. This is the most well-run, and not just dental office, any business I've ever been in. And I wish I could grab and hold on to that comment during those moments like on Tuesday, but I don't. But I'll tell you why that happens. It happens because if you don't have leadership and organization and try to have policy that makes everybody's life better, whether it's popular or not. So it gets worse, staff members, that already are. Dr. Rasner at AOL is my email to send me the hate mail, okay? Which I've never really gotten much of. It gets worse. So after I said, so I basically said, you can't take off or claim a vacation day, or take off, I said, the day after a vacation. So, you know, when you're their vacation, a national holiday, and then I said, and you can't take off on Mondays anymore either, period. And I said, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that to you or if I can enforce that, but I, I, I am saying it to you. So if you're off on a Monday, I'm going to be thinking, are you sick or not? 
You better have a legit reason. And, and by the way, folks, I know in a career, somebody's going to get sick in your career on a Monday. Okay. We all know real sicknesses. But we know what I'm talking about. And let's not pretend that we don't. We all have those people who call off and think it's fine to extend their weekend. And so why am I telling you that? Here's why. So I got to thinking, is that just me having that leadership style? Remember, I'm the guy that's had 21 staff members counting both offices. If you averaged all their years, they've worked for me for an average of 20.2 years. 0.5, excuse me. That's a lot of years. And so why would they do that? And I believe that most teams want you to be their leader more than they do when uh, they do to be their friend. And I get it. In my career, many, many times, there used to be a Bennigan's right next to my office that on a Thursday night, and I'm still fine with that. I'm absolutely fine when we're not in the office. If you can separate that, you meaning you the doctor and you the team, then that's fine. We used to go over to Bennigan's on Thursday. It was kind of like after the Super Bowl of that week. And we would have a drink or two. And it was fun. I met Bennigan's closed during COVID. So we don't do that anymore. Um, I'm not saying you can't do that stuff. I'm saying you got to have the, you know what? To, to instill in uh, policy so you don't have meltdowns around your house. It is not okay to take off whenever you want to take off unless you are truly sick. And let's quit pretending that everybody that takes off is truly sick. Okay, that's the rant. And I want to finish by saying, I got this out of Forbes. As a leader, it feels good when the teams relax. This is from Forbes magazine, business magazine. Comfortable and having fun. You're viewed as a fun boss that people can relate to. However, just as in parenting, leadership requires more. You can't help people grow, mature, perform without pushing them to some degree. If you don't lay out expectations for your team, push people out of their comfort zone, hold people accountable, then you are failing as a leader. Trying to be everybody's best friend is kind of a selfish act because you just need, you just, that's easy to do. It's not about you and how well you're liked. Leadership is about helping people become the best that they can become. And that means stepping up and doing what's hard, like I did, no matter what. Now, what will happen from that? Let me finish. The takeaways here, according to Forbes, are when you avoid conflict by being everybody's friend and not taking action, you make things worse because you set a precedent for it to happen again. And lastly, you need to accept that leadership, in fact, can be lonely. So I know you guys like rants. I don't know how you feel when you hear these stories. You know, my practice has been performing pretty high now for about two months. I've already, I hope it's not your first time. You're going to have to go back and see the other podcast because we had a slump for the, for the, First three months of this year, April was banging, May was banging, May's over. I expect June to be as terrific as well. And the primary thing responsible for that turnaround were the, the reinstallation of a meaningful, a meaningful morning meeting, of which I've dedicated myself to that. It's a thing now, it's a habit. I get up an hour earlier, which is a good thing. And I get to the office and I'm on time and we have time to lay out and look for weaknesses and strengths in the day, this and that. And I think of these, and so will you, 
a lot of things that aren't even happening that day, but would be happening tomorrow. Okay? So, like, when I started the meeting this Tuesday, I'm the one that brought up to my team. I just want to remind everybody, that's what I said, that next week, which is next week, we won't have either for primary front desk person here because our one person is gave her resignation, and that's when it starts. And our other front desk person is on vacation. Can anybody tell me how that happened? This is the kind of talk to, you know, I, I didn't berate them. I said, can I, do you, do you, and I, this is what I often say. Do you understand, to my team, as we do these meetings, why they're so important? Is If I didn't bring that up for next week, if there's not a, a plan, if all of a sudden you walk in next Monday, all of you, and you're two people that make the appointments for hygiene, that take emergency visits calls, that help fix a broken schedule, are both not here, how can that be a good thing? And why sh shouldn't somebody have planned for that? Maybe the person that took vacation shouldn't have taken vacation that week. Anyway, so let me leave you with, with this stuff. Last, last podcast, I had told you about you can't improve anything that you do not measure. And to me, that is pretty high level functioning of a lion-hearted practice. Like when you get to the point that you can start to do things like exit interviews, track how many new patients you receive from a certain marketing uh, how many, you know, uh, campaign that you, and like you started using the radio, something new that I advocate that I do. Uh, you can't do that in every marketing area, by the way. So you'd have to write to me. I, I, I've given other people literally copies of my, at my 60 second ad that you can emulate if you want. It's terrific. I mean, I wouldn't waste your time or mine telling you that if, if it didn't bring me tremendous ROI, return on investment. But I want you to ask yourself, any of you that are, might be struggling, just in general as a, as a practice right now, do you have an office of systems? Because that's the key word. You know, do you have clearly defined job roles? And you can get these. Your, your job right now is to say, do I... Does everybody know what we expect of them? Okay. I have somebody right now that's training in sending CBCTs in my office, because we do a lot of surgery, to a new lab. And, and, you know, it's a new portal that you have to upload. And this new lab has different protocols and wants photographs a certain way. It's very exciting, actually, to me. So it's very exciting to me. So I have somebody... One of my dental assistants that is training, and she's going to be that go-to person because it's a lot to do. Dual scanning. I don't know if those of you that do not do implants, but dual scanning protocols of somebody wearing a denture so that where you're sending it can get a high-level measure of where to help you design your whole case. So that's just not – you don't just take an impression and mail it. And so that person's in the middle of training for that. And you, doctor, are the one behind all of this. You got to make that decision. Who's going to be that person? Go to them. Do they want to be that person? And this is what they have to do. Most people do like to learn and expand their job roles, I have found, over 40 years. Do you have crossover job roles? You should. You should not have an office of specialist. Everybody has to have delegated jobs, but this other person, then you go to, well, who can do this also if somebody is out or is on vacation? Do you have defined how a new patient phone call goes? Uh, in the protocol book that I wrote 20 years ago, that a lot of you have asked for, by the way, still, we cover all that. Like, it can't be random. You got to remember the whole goal when these patients take the leap of faith to go out of network and see you. So, at some point, 
They're going to pick up a phone, right? And call you. From that moment on, from that moment, somebody answers that phone. It has to be palpable that you're different. To the moment they walk in your office, that they look around, to how they, the flow goes from them to the front desk to back to the operatory, to you coming in and introducing yourself and doing an exam. And does this sound foreign to you? I know to most lion-hearted dentists, it's not foreign. Where does the scheduling come in to where that new patient goes? You get me? When you're in an office that does a lot of surgery, that's a very challenging decision. Where do you put a new patient where the doctor actually has time and he better have time? What's lunch look like in your office? Like I call offices all the time, specialists especially near me that, did I just say specialist that especially, especially specialist that closed down an hour, hour and a half for lunch? I never ever would do that or have I. Here's how I look at it. We're there to maximize that day. And to do that, I don't need an hour lunch. And when I hire a staff member, I'm, I kind of grieve, I don't kind of, I review, this is what lunch looks like in our office, which lunch in our office usually means, you know, I would say half an hour is the most anybody ever's gotten. And it's kind of comes when you can take it. And then, by the way, that isn't because we do so many patients per day. It's because we do high-level, complicated things that require a lot of energy. Anyway, I'm going to stop there because we are at 32 minutes. I hope you enjoyed the rant this week. I hope there was some takeaway. Please email me and let me know you're listening to me like some of you do each week. I appreciate it. Enjoy it. I'm still putting together the mastermind group. It's going to take a while. And then what I'll do is master, go back to a couple of podcasts. If you know what I'm talking about, I'm trying to put together some really cool things where I can take and focus these things you hear me talk about weekly into a concentrated informational boost that you'll have coming at you month after month after month. Thanks for listening. Have a great week. Come on, man. You only got this one shot in life. I think it's worth it. It's worth it to put everything you have into it. But I never finished my thought about why my team would be okay with somebody that leads like that. And my real concise thought is staff, I mean, I don't yell at people. I'm not embarrassing people. You can never do that. But you can have policy and explain why. It really was a meltdown of my team more than it was to me personally. I couldn't do one implant because of that lack of an additional staff member. My team was stressed. That's why when you call out, everybody's job just got harder. Have a great week. See you next week on The Lionhearted.